Blood flow dynamics and the structure of artery and veins are different. Therefore, it is not surprising that thrombus formation in the arteries and veins have different characteristics in terms of mechanism of development, their predisposing causes, the thrombus composition, and their clinical consequence. The arterial flow is a high pressure system where blood flow is fast and cells undergo lots of shear stress. Atherosclerotic changes is also a feature only seen in arteries. Venous flow, meanwhile, is slow and sluggish and often has to flow against gravity from the lower extremities. The flow is aided by venous valves and calf muscle contractions, and veins do, and, and veins do not exhibit atherosclerotic changes. The cause of arterial thrombosis is usually due to endothelial injury resulting from a rupture of the atherosclerotic plug. Other causes include vasculitis and hypercoagulability. Stasis is not a common cause of arterial thrombosis unless it develops in large spaces such as in the cardiac ventricle or aorta following an aneurysm. On the other hand, Venous thrombosis is more commonly seen in normal, non-injured veins, mainly due to stasis. Hypercoagulability is another cause for venous thrombosis. Arterial thrombus forms within a high-pressure state with high flow and shear stress. Because arterial thrombus forms in rapidly moving blood, red cells tend to be washed away and the thrombus is mainly composed of platelets and fibrins. Occasionally, large arterial mural thrombus that form in the cardiac chambers and aorta may show alternating layers of red cells and platelets, which are called lines of sun. Venous thrombosis, in contrast, occurs under low pressure and low flow conditions, giving time for red cells to sediment and be trapped within the fibrin network. Therefore, venous thrombi tend to appear red and soft as compared to arterial thrombi which are pale and firm. As arterial thrombus are formed mainly of platelets and fibrin, they remain strongly adherent to the arterial wall. In contrast, in venous thrombi, they are soft, loosely attached to the venous wall and are easily friable as they are composed mainly of red cells. The major sites of arterial thrombosis is the coronary artery, which can lead to myocardial infarction, and cerebral arteries that lead to stroke. Other common sites include the carotid arteries, aorta, and cardiac chambers. Venous thrombosis has a predilection for the deep veins of the leg, which can lead on to pulmonary embolism. Other unusual sites of venous thrombosis include the portal vein and cerebral venous sinuses. The clinical consequences of arterial and venous thrombosis is vastly different. Arteries carry oxygenated blood to tissues. Arterial thrombosis obstructs arterial blood flow and this will cause reduced or absent oxygenated blood delivery to the tissue leading on to tissue hypoxia and necrosis. Veins on the other hand transport back deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Venous thrombosis causes obstruction to the deoxygenated blood returning to the lungs and will increase the venous hydrostatic pressure and consequently cause edema. Because arteries are meant to transport oxygenated blood, its occlusion by arterial thrombosis is associated with ischemic episodes such as angina pectoris, or it may cause an infarct such as a myocardial infarction and stroke, or the obstruction of the arteries supplying the lower limbs may cause gangrene and peripheral vascular disease. Occasionally, the arterial thrombi may detach and be transported distally to cause an arterial thromboembolism. The clinical consequence of venous thrombosis is localized edema because of the increased hydrostatic pressure, 
But the major complication of venous thrombosis is venous thromboembolism and pulmonary embolism. Infarction from a venous, thrombos is, uh, venous thrombosis is extremely rare and occur in only special circumstances such as ovarian or superior sagittal sinus thrombosis.